Okay. But then, you can say, this is the analog signal. You see that? That is your microphone. When you're talking, your voice will be look like. And they go to the amplifier. Okay, can go to speaker. That what you will be, you already learning from take one for electronic. And now we go to take two. This is the voice coming out from a CD. The data will be one zero one one whatever. That's a binary. Okay, and this a binary, they need to con go to the device. They call a digital to analog converter. And that will be converting back your voice here. Okay, then they go to the amplifier, go to speaker. So, in this tech two, you will be learning about digital, okay? First thing, when you're talking about the digital, everything in the computer, only one thing the computer can understand, that is the binary. That means either one or zero, not else. okay? So the first thing we be learning is talking about the number system. So basically, on the number system, first one you're using a decimal number. That's normal, right? You can get the 10 digit. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up to 9. And that's what they call a base of 10. That's for a human, okay? Second thing, binary number system. They get only two digits, either zero and one, okay? And they call a base two. This is the language of the computer. Computer know nothing except one or zero. Okay. Next one, auto number system. They get an eight digit. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they get a base number eight. Really now they're not using auto number system. Okay. The last one. That will be a high decimal number system. They get a 16 digit. 0, 1, 2, 3, up to A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay? And now, binary to decimal conversion. If you get a binary number, one, one, zero, one, one, each one they go up, one, one bit. So in this case, you get a five bit, one, two, three, four, five. The computer can understand one, one, zero, one, one, but we cannot. So that's why we have to convert it, this binary to the decimal. Okay, so you see how they do. First thing, you take a one time two. Power up one, two, three, four. Power four. Plus one time two to the power up one, two, three. Zero time two to the power up one, two. And one times two power of one. One times two power of zero. 
So, two power four will be 16. Adding two power three will be eight. Zero anyway, zero. Adding two power uh, up one will be two. And two power up zero, okay? Power up zero it will be a one. You add them up, you get number 27, base 10. Okay? That is the way you can understand when the computer gets a binary number and you converting into the decimal number. Okay? And now, to get a decimal to binary conversion. Okay? They said, they gave it to you number 25, okay, base 10. And they want to know what is the binary number. Basically, we're not using this one, okay? However, in here they can say you repeat division. First thing you take 25 divide to 2, you get 12, okay? So reminder, remaining of 1, you get 1. You take 12 divide 2, you get 6, but remaining 0. And you take 6 divide to 2, you get 3, remaining of 0. And you get 3 divide to 2, you get 1. Remaining a one and one divide to two, you get a zero remaining of one. So number twenty five, okay, base ten equivalent with one one zero zero one 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 zero zero one. So that will be converting from the decimal to binary, and we don't need that, but we just bring it up for you, okay? The one, next one will be converting height to decimal conversion. Basically, height to the decimal conversion also, we don't need that, but they show you here how to do it. You take 3 times 16, okay, 16 for the height. Power will be 1, 2, that's square here. And plus 5 times 16 power 1. And 6 times 10, uh, 16 power 0. You can go get to get. 8, 5, 4, base 10. That means if you get a height number, you can convert it into the decimal. Okay? And now, how to convert height to binary? If you get 9F2, base 16, base 16, that for the height decimal. So number nine, you can get one zero zero one, converting eight digits. Number F will be one 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 one. And number two will be zero zero one zero. Okay. Require binary must be four bit. Okay. I can give you an example. Okay, let's see. Um, height to binary. Number three. Base 16. Base 16 means height decimal. And you converting to binary. Number three will be zero. Zero. One. One, 
they must be forbid. And this one will be given to you the table. You can follow in the table to get converted quickly. Okay. And now, if you get the high decimal and you want to know the binary. Okay. That means you get one zero one 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 zero one zero zero one one zero. That's a binary. If you want converting to the height decimal, what you need to do from the right, okay, to the left, you're counting one, two, three, four. That's one number. One, two, three, four. Another one. And now you're converting each one. One, zero, one, one. Okay. One, zero, one, one. In the height will be B. Okay. One, zero, one, zero will be A. And zero, one, one, zero will be number six. Eight for bit group in binary. Okay. And out on the binary, you will be doing the same. But only three bit for each bit, the thing is octo base number eight. Or uh, binary to octo without using octo. So that's why we don't need that. BCD code, binary code decimal. When a number letter of a word are represented by special group of symbol. This is called encoding. If each digit of a decimal number is represented by its binary equivalent, it produces a code called a BCD. That means binary code decimal. For bit it is required to code to code eight digits. If you get a number 874 base 10, you have to understand base 10 is a decimal. Okay? And now they're converting to the BCD. Very simple. Convert eight digits in decimal to the binary. And with the four bit number four, you can see zero, zero, one, zero, that number four. Okay. Number seven will be zero, one, one, one. And number eight will be one, zero, zero, the zero. If you get number binary, And now you want to know the decimal. Okay. First thing, you take the first digit here. One time two power one, two, three. Adding zero time two power up. Zero one, that means two. You adding another zero. Time two, power one. And you adding the last one. One time two, power zero. Okay, one time two, power three will be eight. Zero anyway will be zero. Zero will be zero. One times two pop zero. Pop zero is one. One times one will be a one. So that will be equal to eight. Plus one will be nine. Okay? That is the basic way. When you get a binary, you're going to convert into the decimal. Okay?
Make one up uh, HF three calls, but forming the same head B C D HF head three is added to each decimal digit before encoding in the binary. Okay. So you get a 48 by the 10, okay? And converting into exact three code, you can get 0111, 1011, okay? Later when the, we need it, we will let you know how to add in that. Alpha numeric code, A-S-C-I-I. That the American standard code for information in the chain. If you go into the Google, you type in ASCII, they given you the table, the table related between okay, decimal and the binary. They have to follow the same way. So that's why on the computer, okay, they must be the same. The next one, in electronic, binary represented by the voltage or the current. That only tells you one thing. When you're working on the computer, they on the mother wall, you want to measure the binary, then you cannot get the binary. You cannot get one or you cannot get zero. When you're using the meter to measure, you can get only the voltage. Okay? And that's why they given you the definition here. Fourth one, they're talking about DTL transistor, transistor logic. By definition, V high will be 5.5 and a V high minimum, 2 volts. That means from 2 volts up to 5.5. Logic one, okay? If you get, you measure, you get A equal four volt. That will be telling you A will be equal one, okay? Based on that definition. And the V low, okay? 0 0.8 volt, and that will be zero. So from zero to 0 0.8 volt will be zero. So that's why if you measure on the circuitry, you get point B, 0 0.2 volt. That will be telling you B equal zero. So now you understand, okay? You working, you get a voltage. However, you cannot do anything with that voltage. That voltage is telling you what logic one or logic zero, okay? And now you're looking into the signal here, the clock signal, okay? They can get a zero here, go to one, then go zero, go to one, zero, go to one, okay? So basically, you can get one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Keep going forever, okay? And now if you get another signal, so to get a zero here, then they go to one, and they go to one here, and zero, and keep going, and you get a zero, zero here, and one, 
one here, okay? Bit sequence represented by where from A, okay? So basically, that's just a signal. If you're looking on the oscilloscope, you can see this signal. That means the voltage will be either zero up here, and they can be four volts up here. That means for binary. This is just a very definition, okay? You really want to make sure when you see it, you recognize what is it. Now, this is positive going points. That means when the signal, they low, they go into the high and they go low, okay? The one going up, they go up. They go up rising or leading heads. And the one going down, they call it falling or trailing heads. Okay? And that's what they call a positive going. Force is that only one. You don't go up, can go down. And that is an opposite, negative going forces. They high, and they go to zero. And they go up to high. Okay? And that's what they call a falling or leading head. This one will be a rising or trailing S. Okay? Uh, a portion of periodic digital waveform is shown in figure 1 minus 10. This is now here. The measurement are in milliseconds. They want to determine the following. What is the period? What is the frequency of duty cycle? Okay. So you understand that the period will be going up, going down. When they're going up again, that's what you get the period. Okay. And frequency. Okay, basically, you get the frequency, the formula will be F equal 1 over T. You get the period, then you're able to get the frequency and the duty cycle. Okay, they're telling you in here. You want to get a duty cycle. They will be equal to T double U divide to capital T hundred percent. T double U will be here. That means they go high for how long? Okay. Then you able to calculate the duty cycle. This shows you two ways for the binary data. First one, serial data. This is sending device they send to the receiving. When they send it, only need a one wire. Only one wire. However, the signal will be high, low, high, high, low, low, high, low. That means they keep going. That's what they call. Serial data, okay? Basic serial data you need on the single wire to sending your data and receiving data. Another way, the parallel transfer, okay? This is a sending device. They want to send eight bit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For example, one zero one one zero zero one zero, and it receiving. So when you transfer by parallel, one bit require one wire. Okay, so eight bit will be asking for eight wires. So normally, what happen inside the computer? 
the data will be working still parallel data. Okay? Like you say computer 32 bit, that means you have to get 32 wire. 64 bit, they asking for 30, 64 wire. Okay? And the serial data, when they get out the computer, data will be sending by serial. Otherwise, you don't have enough wire for serial data. Like you're talking on the phone, the, the phone, okay, your voice will be too many bits. And that, if you're using parallel, you cannot get it. You must be sending by serial, okay? However, when they go to the other computer, other cell phone, that means you speaker, you send talking, they converting to the serial data, they transfer it to the other phone. And when they go to the other one, they have to be converting back into the parallel data. And your phone like the computer, okay? They can be working. So that bring it up to you. Two ways, the signal can be transferred either by serial data. You need only one wire. And another one will be parallel data, depending on how many bits. In this example, you get eight bits. You need a wire, okay? In the computer now, you know, they can be 32 bit. That means they need 32 wires or 64 bit, 64 wire. Okay, so now, if you don't know, uh, relationship between the decimal and the binary, you get a table. That decimal zero, you get zero, 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 zero. That will be zero. Number one, zero, 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 one. And number two, zero, zero, one, zero. And so on. Okay? Instead, you have to use two to the power of n. Okay? And add them up. Now, we try to use this table. You don't have to. Look into the table, you know right away. Next one, we're talking about this one you already know. You get this to your calculator right here. Okay? And you type in the number nine. The computer cannot understand number nine. So basically, on the calculator, they get a divided core, encoder. Encoder, the job will be converting number nine to the binary. That means they're converting to one, zero, zero, one, equivalent to number nine. So the computer can understand, okay? So basically, encoder will be converting from a decimal, okay, to the binary, so the computer can understand. And the next one, okay, we call it decoder. Basically, when you get a binary coming in, okay, and the decoder will be connect to the display, what they call a seven segment, exactly in the watch. Okay, if they display number eight, so in here the number eight will be one zero zero zero. That number eight. If you don't know, you can see right here. One zero zero. One zero zero zero. That number eight. 
Okay. So when we go to the decoder, decoder will be connected into the display for humans. So they will be display number eight. Okay. If you get number one, zero, zero, one, number nine, so they will be display this one. Number nine. Okay. So that's what we call a decoder. Okay. First thing, convert the following binary one number to decimal. Can you do it to see you can get 109 or not? That is the answer. Okay. So I try repeat again for you, okay, one time. First thing, you take the first one. One time, two, what power you count here? You right here. So Seven. Two, three, four, five, six. And you're adding number one, next one. Two, power, five, and zero, you don't care, okay? So you add it to the next one will be this one here. One, time two, power one, two, three. And you add in the next one here. Two power two. And you don't care about zero. You care about what? One times two power of zero. Okay? So you think you can get one oh nine or no? Did anyone do it to make sure I get the right answer? I got it. Yeah, I got 109. 109, right? So the next one will be answer will be 145. That means you can get binary and you want to convert into decimal. No big deal. Okay. And another one, convert the following decimal number to binary. Okay? So basically, you already know you get a binary, you want to get a decimal, you divide by two. Okay? That means you get it, but the thing is, we're not using that in the program. Okay? So we don't care. Convert the following binary number to decimal, okay, we, you already see that, we just divide by two. Okay, now, we're talking about binary addition. Zero adding to zero. The sum will be zero with the carry zero. Zero adding to one. Sum will be one. No carry. One adding to zero. Sum will be one. No carry. Only thing is one adding to one. They not equal to, okay? They will be one adding to one will be zero. However, carry of one. Okay, now what that means? Carry one mean adding one to the next column. See. Now they want to add it. Okay. One one adding to one one.
Okay, let's see what you think you can get. First thing, one added to one. What you get from this table? One added to one. One with a carrier one? Equal zero, right? Carry one. Carry one means adding one to the next column. That means you have to adding one here. One adding to one equal what? Zero, right? Zero adding to one equal one, but still carry one. Now you can see one one number three. One one number three. Three adding three to get number six. And answer will be one one zero A will be number six. Okay. That was for this one. Okay, you adding one zero zero to one zero. Tell me what you get. I can try for you, one, zero, adding to one, zero. Zero, adding zero. Zero, adding to one, one, one. Nothing means zero here. One at zero will be one. Okay, this number decimal will be four. This number will be two. And that's why you get one one zero in number six. Okay, and try number C. Get one, one, one. You add into one one. First thing, one adding to one. Zero, carry one. Carry one means adding one to the next. So now you have to adding one here. One adding to one is zero, carry one. Zero adding to one will be one. Carry one. One added to one will be zero. Carry one. Okay? So now you can see one, one, one. What number for one, one, one? Eight. Ten? Seven, right? Seven. And one, one will be three. Seven add to three, you get number ten. And one zero, one zero, that means number ten. If you don't know, you can see on that one here. Okay. One zero, one zero. That means number ten. Okay, so that will be telling you if you try to add it, okay? And remember, zero adding zero, zero. No carry. Zero adding to one, some will be one. No carry. One adding to zero is one. No carry. However, one adding to one, the sum will be zero. However, carry of one. Okay, so I understand. Carry one means adding one to the next column.
Now we're talking about binary subtraction. Zero minus zero, you get zero. Zero minus one, you get a one with a borrow one. What that means? Borrow one means subtract one from next column. Okay? One minus zero is one, one minus one zero. So they want you to try one one minus zero one. One minus one, zero, right? One minus zero, a one. If you go by the decimal, one one number three, zero one number one, one zero that mean number two. Three minus one, you get a two. Okay, now try another one. Let's see. Number six. One, one, zero, one. Minus zero, one, zero, zero. One minus zero is one. Zero minus zero, zero. One minus one will be zero. One minus zero, one. Let's see. In a decimal, what one, what number? One, one, zero, one. You know what the number mm -hmm. for? Decimal for one one zero one. I think thirty. Nine. That zero one zero zero. What number? Eight. Ah, come on. Four. 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 Thirteen minus four, you get nine. One zero zero one is nine. Okay. So. When we get to do, you know, play assignment, then you try to figure out how to do it. Complement a binary number. So basically, they get two system, first complement and a second complement. Why? Why we need the first or second complement, I show you. You get number five. One, zero, one. Is number five. You see that? Number five. However, the computer have to deal with both positive and a negative. They have to do with minus five. Or blood five. In this one here, they're just talking about absolute value, number five. Binary will be equivalent one zero one. However, minus five is not. They cannot be one zero one. They have to be different. So the computer also, I said, they have to deal with the quality and the negative. So that's why they get to sit down. Either first complement or the second complement to deal with the Number forty negative. Okay, now what thing? Finding the first complement. The first complement of a binary number is found by changing on one to zero and on zero to one. Very simple. 
if you get a binary number one zero one one zero zero one zero, you want it to be a fourth complement. Just go ahead, one ten zero zero ten to one, and so on. Mr. And Fan, I do have a question though. So, like with five being one zero one, its complement is zero one zero. But how does a computer know the difference between negative five and positive two? <laughs> that what inside they already built. If they if they see the number in the binary, okay, in the first complement or in the second complement, then they understand they will be a positive or negative number. Okay. Right now, do not go into detail in first complement how we use a second complement. So we have to try to go into what is the first complement and what it will be in the second complement. Okay. If you want to a binary number one zero one, if you want in the first complement. Go ahead and ten here one to zero, zero to one, one to zero. This is the number in fourth complement. Okay, you can not say they will be number five. Okay, you have to convert it back to get number five, but they will be in fourth complement. Very simple. Now, second complement. Second complement of binary number is found by adding one to this significant bit of first complement. Okay? In order to get second complement, you first thing you have to get first complement. Then you add one that will be telling you you get Satan complement. Okay. For example, you get number binary one zero one one. One zero one one zero zero one zero. First thing you have to get first complement. Then one to zero zero to one. Okay, now you adding one, that will be get second complement. Okay, I can show you how we can do. First thing you get a binary, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero. Okay, now you want four complements. Ten, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one. This is a fourth complement. You want second complement. Adding one. One adding one, zero, carry one. Carry one means adding one to the next. Zero adding one, you get a one. One, one, zero, zero, one, zero. So that will be second. Second complement, okay? Very simple to get a first complement. Converting binary zero to one, one to zero. If you want the second complement, first thing you need to find first complement, then you adding one. That's what you get the second. So, for section check up here, you think you can do easy, right? No big deal. 
first day day one first complement. Just then zero to one one to zero. Another one day one second complement. First thing you have to get first complement. Then you adding one, you get second complement. Okay. Now, digital system. Just add computer must be able to handle both positive and negative number. Okay. A side binary number can set up both side and magnitude information. The side indicate whether, whether a number is positive or negative and the magnitude is the value of the number. There are three forms in which side integer number can be represented in binary. Side magnitude, first complement, second complement. Of this, the second complement is the most important and the psi magnitude is the least yield. Non integer and very large or small number can be expressed in floating point format. After completing this section, you should be able to express positive negative number in psi magnitude or okay express priority and negative number in first complement okay express priority and negative number second complement okay let's see what's going on here psi bit the left most bit in a psi binary number is a psi bit okay that means you get an 8 bit, the left mode bit, they will be using for side bit, okay? Which tells you whether the number is party negative. A zero side bit indicates a party number, and a one side bit indicates a negative number. If you're looking a bit on the Left mode, if zero, you know positive number. And this is the value. If you get a one, that will be negative number, okay? When a side binary number is represented inside magnitude, the left mode bit is the side bit and the remaining bit are uh, the magnitude bit. The magnitude bit are in true binary for both party negative number. For example, the decimal number 25. This is a 25. It is set in 8 bit. The side binary number using the side bit of 0 right here. 0 and 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. That's not 25. And the minus 25 will be the same value here. However, the side bit now will be number one, telling you they be negative. Notice that the only difference between plus and minus 25 is the side bit because the magnitude bit are in true binary for both party and a negative number. In the side magnitude form, a negative number has the same magnitude bit at the corresponding positive number, but the side bit is one rather than zero. Okay, basically they're just telling you the value of the number will be the same for both positive or negative. However, the left mode bit, if the zero, then this will be positive. If they one, that means Negative. Yet, first complement form. Positive number in first complement form are represented the same way 
at the fortunate side, but the good number. Negative number, however, are the first complement of the corresponding positive number. For example, it is admit the decimal number minus 25. It is expressed as the first complement of plus 25. Now, if you get the number 25, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay? And in the first complement, you revert 1 to 0, 0 to 1. And that will 0 to 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 to 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1 to 0. That means first complement. Okay? In the first complement, a negative number is the first complement of the corresponding positive number. Okay? Second complement form. Positive number in second complement form are represented the same way as in the sign magnitude and first complement form. Negative number are the second complement of corresponding positive number. Again, using admit, that take decimal number minus 25 and express it as second complement. Blood 25, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Inverting admit and get the first complement. Adding one you get second complement. So that's why minus 25 will be this number. Okay? So basically, we not deal much with the this thing. Okay? The thing that we deal with a digital circuitry. If you go to the college, you go to university, then they will be go to detail. Okay? Forcing you to working on that. But we basically... Only one semester, we don't have enough time to go too much detail, okay? And here, example, express decimal number 39. And add an admit number in the side market with first complement and second complement. So now you can see the solution. First, why admit number 39? This is number 39. In the side magnitude form, minus 39 is produced by changing the side bit to a 1 and leaving the magnitude bit as they are. That means this will be a 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. That means the left mode here, you change from 0 to 1, telling you negative. Okay? In the first complement form, 39 is produced by taking the first complement of blood 39. Okay, this is the 39. If you want the first complement converting, okay, 0 to 1, 1 to 0. And if you get the second complement, okay, then you have to take first complement, you adding 1. Okay, so basically now you can understand in the computer, they are using the first complement or the second complement system to deal with the negative number. Okay, so you can get a time, you can read in that one. We don't want to spend too much hour on that until if you not understand when you get into the assignment, then I help you out. Binary to hexadecimal conversion. Converting a binary number to hexadecimal is straightforward procedure. <clears throat> Simply break the binary number into four bits starting at the right mode bit and replace each four bit loop with the equivalent hexadecimal. That means if you get a binary number here, 
and they want to get the high decimal. They telling you from the right, one, two, three, four. Divide into four bit. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now you're converting each one. One, one, zero. Okay. One, one, zero. They will be number C. Okay. You will be at that table. And one, zero, one, zero will be number A. Okay. Zero one zero one number five. Zero one one number seven. So basically, this is B sixteen, and this will be binary. Only thing is very simple. You want to converting binary to hex decimal. Divide by four bit from the right and then it's four bit to the decimal, uh, tech decimal. That's what they give you the table here. With this table, you can change. Okay, layer one, 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 tech decimal will be F. Okay, one zero, one zero. They will be eight. On this, this side will be a decimal. Okay, in the middle will be a binary. And this one, okay, this one will be the height decimal. You will be using that on the top. Decimal BCD conversion. That one you need to know, but we not apply much thing. Okay. Zero up to number nine. BCD asking for it just have to be four but for example, number one. Number one, this is number one. This is number one. This is number one. This is number one. What a different? Differently, how many bit? This is only one bit. This is adding two bit, three bit. That is four bit. So. In the BCD, each one in the decimal converting to the BCD, they must be for bit H. That's what they want. For example, converting following number to BCD. Okay, I can see 35 here. 35 number 3. Number 3 will be 0, 0, 1, 1. Number five will be zero, one, zero, one. Okay? That means they are asking for four bit. Okay? BCD addition. Zero, zero, one, one, adding zero, one, zero, zero. Okay? Zero one one is number three, right? Zero one zero number four. When you add in, you get zero one 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 number seven. And now you add in this one. This is zero zero one zero number two. Number three. And you add in to number one to number five. So number two adding to number one, you get zero zero one one number three. Alright? Zero zero one one number three adding zero one zero one. 
number five. That's what you get year one zero zero number eight. Okay. And keep adding it. Okay. And now a little problem right here. You adding one zero zero one. You can add into zero, one, zero, zero. So zero, one, zero, zero, one, that means number nine. You add into zero, one, zero will be number four. Basically, you get a 13. You know the BCD, they cannot be higher than nine. Okay, we'll see how they can do. If you add in here, okay, one adding zero, one, zero, one, one. You get one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, okay. This one, if you're doing calculation, you can see they will be number 13. And that's what they say, invalid BCD number. Why invalid? I think a BCD cannot be higher than nine. So in order to solve the problem, they asking you, you need add number six. Okay, you take the number, add it to number six. That means you can come up with zero, zero, one, and zero, zero, one, one. That will be number 13. The thing I did one will be number one. This one, number three. That's why you get 13. The thing is, if you adding nine to four, you get 13. Again, what I try to emphasize here, okay, if you want to add in BCD, if the output coming higher than number nine, then you have to add in number six, okay? A record, okay? You can read record, the unweighted is not arithmetic code whatever okay they want to do for bit record decimal binary you get the equivalent to the gray code right here zero one zero one zero whatever okay and the decimal add this in a gray code okay now they're talking about binary to gray code conversion if you get a one, zero, one, one, zero binary, and they just asking you, I want a red, red code, then that I show you how to do. First thing one, you bring it up with one here. Then one adding to zero, and so will be one. Then zero adding to one, and so will be one. One adding to one, is zero, no carry, okay? One adding to zero, you get one, that's great. Easy, okay? If you get a binary, you converting to the gray, gray port. That's what the way we do, okay? So you can try, okay? When you're working on that, i given you the answer here, okay? Very simple. And now they get a gray code and they converting back to a binary. If you get this a gray code right here, one, one, zero, one, one, that's a gray. If you want to convert to binary, first thing, you bring it up one here, okay? And one here, you adding to one. One adding to one, you get zero, no carry. And zero here, you adding to zero. You get a zero. 
and zero adding to one, you get a one. One adding to one, you get a zero. Only thing is no carry. That's a very simple. A-S-C-I-I, nothing to talking about that. They just converting, you know, everything to the binary, everything in a computer. Now, in that one, we're talking about law and the rules of Boolean algebra. Okay, this one uh, basically you want to know, but it's too old, okay? You have to understand. First thing, you get an A. A adding to zero, what equal? A means just a binary. A can be equal to zero or what? Okay, A is just a variable in the binary number system. Then A, either they can be one or they can be zero. A adding zero, the answer will be A. You know why? If A equals zero, you adding zero, you get zero. If A one, you adding zero, you get one. So that's why. A or zero equal A. And the next one, A or one. What do you think equal? One. One. Okay. In the binary, you get only two number. Zero or one. Now, if one, add one, add one, what you get? One. One. Okay, perfect. Not four, okay? We don't have a number four in the binary. Binary only either one or zero. So now, when you're working in the lab, if they connect to one, where do you connect to? If some wire, so you connect to one, where do you connect to? Okay, I can tell you. You get only two things, either zero or one. Okay, zero mean round. One mean five. When they connect it to logic one, that means you connect it to five volt. You see, very simple, right? The thing is, you can get either zero or one. Zero means connect to the round. And one means connect to the five volt. Okay, A times zero, no matter what you get zero. A times one. Basically, A times one depend on A. A zero, you get zero. A one, you get one. So that's why equal A. A plus A. You get A. You cannot get two A. Okay? A plus not A, that is missing A. 
a plot not a. Okay, you understand a equal one. Not a, opposite zero. Okay, a or not a equal one. A time a equal a, a and so on. Okay, and that the Morgan theory. You get the product, sum of product, x times y. That means the product. You get the bar over. Okay. Bar over. That means inverted. So you get the product you converting. You try to break that bar out over. You want to break that one. Okay, I will be not I here. Y will be not Y. And I and Y. Now will be all Y. Okay. So this converting from product to the sum. And now that one. You get not I or Y. That means the sum. You convert into the product. That means you break the bar here. I will be not I. Y will be not Y. However, all here now will be not Y. Okay. Later on, if we apply, you can look in, into that. Now, this is the real thing we have to do. The thing is that what we're using. First thing we're talking about and get. This is the symbol of the and get. The get indicates to input A, B, and the output Y will equal A times B. Okay, and this is the IC for the end gate. Okay, the part number 7408. Inside that IC, they get one, two, three, four. Four gate. If you're looking on the fourth one, pin one, pin two, that means the input, and pin three, that means the output. Okay. Next one, pin four, five in, pin six out. Uh, next one, nine, ten in, eight out, and so on. And pin 14 will be five volt, VCC. And uh, pin seven will be round. This is a table telling you A, B. A, zero, B, zero, you get zero, zero, one, you get zero. One zero, you get zero. One one, you get one. Now, <coughs> what they said here: two input and get symbol boolean output equation. Two table for two input and get part number seven four zero eight. Okay. However, they can get two or more input. Okay, however, only one output. I give you an example. One, two, three. They can be A, B, C. However, Y equal A times B and C. Okay. In order to easy to know, you have to know this one. Output A1. If on inputs are one. One input zero, output must be zero. For example, why A B if you get a zero here? Then the output must be zero. You don't care about that. That one. Okay? 
If you get an input, one here, one here, one here, then the output can be a one. Okay? That's talking about and get. If you're looking in the gate, you must take the knife. This is the end gate. Next one. Another one. Or gate. Okay. You can see the difference right here. Okay. And all gate will be 7432. Inside one I see, you can get one, two, three, four. Same thing. However, what you need to do to know what they say right here. Output is zero. If on inputs, zero. Okay? If you get a zero here, they cannot tell you output zero until you get a zero here. Okay. However, if you get the input here in one, then no matter what here, output have to be one. The thing is Y equal A or B. That means one or zero. One. Okay. One or one or one. One. So, for the object, one input is one to one. Output must be one. We don't care about the other input. Okay? So, that one. After that one, we can stop it. Okay? We will continue on next time. Now, inverter. A. This is a simple for inverter. A and the output Y equal not A. Not A, that means A zero, then output will be one. A equal one, output will be zero. Okay, this is a simple here. Inside I see part number 7404. You get one, two, three, four, five, six gate. Six gate inverter. Which one in, which one out. Okay. So, what I want to make sure you understand when you're looking into the gate, you recognize this is the end gate or this is the all gate, and it will be a inverter. Okay. Okay, so you get the time try to look over, okay, from the NAND gate, NOR gate, exclusive all, okay. Oh, we can quickly go through that one so we can get it done. Next time we can get another one. NAND, this is the gate here. NAND means not end. So you can see they draw the end gate. Now they get a bubble here. Bubble here means inverted. If you get A and input A and input B, you go to the end, A and B. And now you can go to the inverter. Inverter, you just put A and B, put a bar over. That means not A and B. Okay. If you want to converting not A and B here, you see what they equal. A will be not A. B will be not B. And the N here will be converting to the R. Not that what we already get to it. So the output will be not A or not B. Okay. That's what they, you see right here. And this is a two table telling you input A, B, and what is the output. Okay? And if you're looking in here, 
the output only equal zero. Okay, if input equal one and one, otherwise output will be equal one. So if you get an inverter here, you get a zero here. Then for sure output you get a one. You don't care about that one. One input zero output have to be one. Okay. In order to get the output to be zero, then they have to get a one here. You get the one here, then they get get the zero. Okay. And get and this is no get and take. They will be look like that one. Okay. And y equal not a or b. If you want to take that out, break that out, a will be not. A, R will be A, B will be not B. Okay, why you go not A or not B? If you're looking into the two table here, if the input equal zero, zero, zero mean not zero will be one, right? And N, B, not B, zero will be one. So that's why you can get the one. Okay, try here. A zero, B zero, then you can get a one. Okay, so either one, A or B equal to one, you must get zero. Okay, and the part number 74, zero two. Inside, you can see, you can get one, two, three, four, for get for one I see, okay? Exclusive all and no. This is a symbol for the get, exclusive all, okay? This is a two table. If A is zero, B is zero, you get zero. Zero, one, you get a one, one, zero, you get a one. One, one, you get zero. That only tells you one thing. If input A, zero, A and B the same, you get zero. A and B different, you get one. That is the two table. And that is a nor, okay, inclusive nor, opposite to the R, okay? That means if you get the same input, you get a one, and you get a different input, you get a zero, okay? That's it. Any question? Anything? The thing is on this program here, okay, we have to deal with the lab, okay? Digital lab. If you know how to do, then you can get it done quickly, okay? And this means you have to build the circuit. And also develop the test program to test the circuitry. After you get your program done, you get the circuit view done, and you test the circuit using your program. If they pass, that means you're done. Okay? If it fails, then we have you have to fix it. We'll be more detailed when we start to working on the lab. That means you have to get along with the software C blood blood. Okay, we'll take you that again. Okay. And helping you how to build the circuit and how to test using the control box we designed to connect into the computer, okay? For a while you get along, that's no big deal. Any question, anything? 
So the digital lab, um, you said we have to build it, right? Yeah. So are the materials provided by class or do we have to purchase our the materials? What do you mean? Doesn't mean it. You have to purchase your breadboard, but they supply everything else. Okay. Now, four things. We have to, you guys have to get the breadboard. The wiring, the IC, everything we supporting. Okay. And also, I try to save the tune for cut the wire or whatever. See how much we get. Then we can give it to you guys. Let your guy borrow to do. So basically, you understand it on this thing here. You can working at home. You can build a circuit at home. You can write up your program at home. Only thing is when you try to test your circuitry, then you have to be in the flat so you're able to get a control box helping connect your circuit board to the computer. And when you run it, if it fails, then try to figure out how can we fix that. So, it's not hard to do. You get along. That's a very, very good. The thing you did is a real work. At work, you have to do the same thing. You test the circuit more, they fail. How can you fix that problem? That's what the digital lab for. Okay? Anything else? So what size of breadboard do you need? Uh, I believe maybe you have to let me know how many people want. Okay? The thing is if you buy 10 breadboard different from you buy one. You cannot buy one. The thing is they only delivery at least 10. I believe about twenty-five, twenty-seven dollar, or more. I I will be taking. So whoever want to buy, okay, I will be happy. I can buy, you know, ten red more. Last time, one student in the club let me know. The breadboard cost almost around 25, 27, but that is not good to me. So I have to buy like we, I already bought before, okay? So basically that cost you only 25 or 26, 27, I don't know for sure, we'll take that. Everything else, I see, we support it. Okay. Why then we support it, and we try to find all of the tools you need in order to cut the wire. Okay, and how to build it. Okay, so we'll be talking to the guy in the class. Maybe in the future, I don't know, I, I keep thinking. Instead, you know, we get a lecture on Zoom on the Friday. Maybe I have to, using your guy will be meet, get a meeting on Wednesday in the club. Okay? That may be better than we be on Zoom. And on in the club in on Wednesday on the other room, 240. I can control, 
you know, the student in the program for tech two. If you don't want it, then I can drop you. That's okay. Okay? So you, in order to do it, then we have to work it. So that's why I still thinking, okay? Instead, Friday, not too many show up on the Zoom. In the Tech 2 club, I get about 34 students. But we cannot get up to a half of students. That's what I don't want. The Tech 2, they start from 4 2023. They're working on the lab right now. However, during that time, we don't have a homework. We don't have a quiz. Now everyone has to do it. Even a new people take you. And the people take you almost already inside the queue, okay? Then they still working on the lab, but they still have to do on up the assignment and the quiz or on the test, okay? So that maybe I have to let you know better way. We can working in the class, in the give a lecture in in the class. Okay. Any question? Anything? Okay. If it not, so good night, everyone. Have a good weekend. You too, sir. Good, good night, Mr. Fam. Okay. Hi.